maybe start now and just let people trickle in yeah. as it goes. Okay, great. Thank you guys for signing up um, for the next, uh, for, for this uh, BSA new Global Practice Network new event. Uh, we haven't really been doing any of the lecturing um, for a long time. We had some open forums, we had a walk, walking tour, um, but uh, we're really happy to um, have a guest here and he's gonna share some of his really interesting work um, that he's doing at SciArc right now. Okay, Jimmy, do you wanna introduce yourself and then we can make this light and easy and feel free um, to ask him any question uh, anytime. I think the whole presentation, uh, it's gonna take maybe 20, 30 minutes and then we will have uh, quite some time to um, have some conversations after that. Sounds good? Okay, sounds great. And thank you for Yen for inviting me to, to share my, my work. And then I, I'm currently studying SciArc and uh, architecture technology. And before I came to SciArc, I was working in Japan and Boston. And then, so, uh, so today I'm gonna share some of the work I'm currently working on. So the topic is the uh, art of sampling, reflection on drawing, data, information, and machine vision. So this presentation will be about my uh, current research project on human and AI cooperations for 3D modeling. And this project is inspired by architect and software designer and Dami uh, Yamamuchi and Casey Rin. So the first I will start to uh, start with what drives me to make these tools. And so I would like to talk about the idea of creativity and imagination. So I believe everyone has the experience of seeing a familiar shape from the cloud. The way our brain to process the data is to examine the shape, trace the profile, and perceive the color and texture. You can look at the cloud to make up a story from your imagination. This imagination is highly relevant to our past experience. So these two images can be seen as a dolphin or rabbit because it's a projection from on your, your mental images. And we can easily recognize this shape as a silhouette of the animals because you have already seen this animal before. And you see, you see the wall from what you have already known. You see what you want to see. <clears throat> These images would, would have meant nothing for the people who have never seen rabbit and dolphin before. And however, even if the observer all share the same background knowledge, we still can process the information differently. So in a famous uh, example from The Little Prince, the grown up only can see a head and refuse to accept the images can be an elephant swallowed by a snake. So even though we all have seen the head, snake and elephant, but the ability to see what everyone else cannot see is imagination and creativity. When we were a kid, the way we see the world is slightly different. There was no preconception of what can be or what cannot be. And so I, I would like to call from uh, Professor uh, Kinaleski and Risti. Imagination is ability to see in the future, to see something that doesn't exist yet. Here the idea is not about inventing the new things from a scratch, but recombining what you have already known to create something that doesn't exist through observation and crafting. So again, these images has the same shape, the two interpretation. We only see what we want to see. When facing creativity, we are often confined by the preconceptions. And when we design architecture, we often start by making sketch model or sketches. This is, uh, there is plenty of research from neuroscientists saying our head is connected to our brain. So the moment you start to draw, to make something, your ideas start to evolve. The medium will guide you to discover the unexpected direction. Imagination start to evolve when you are, when you are physically engaging with the medium. And a great design can come from an unexpected direction. Here is, a, is an example 
of creative teas. This is a sketch by architect, architect Tedeschi. The design of the chandelier in the Metropolitan Opera House was never been planned before. It was made from an accident before the meeting with the client. You know, this <laughs> lighting fixture, big and all the chandelier. And I wanted to add a little sparkle white, in the white color. My brush, good brush, quickly. And over drawing, and all these paints splash on the drawing and created some quite nice elements, but in the middle of the drawing, like fireworks, you know, mm -hmm. big spot in the center, and after a lot of uh, small little. Uh, so the inspiration of the chandelier is came from the, the accident of uh, the a drop of, of watercolor drop on the paper, and then it becomes an inspiration for the chandelier design. <laughs> and architects are not just making ideas. Everyone has an idea about something. Architects need to leave the instruction of an idea. So the idea can be physicalized. This is an, is an interpretation of the original book painting made by architect uh, Shingo, Carl Shingo. In his version, the painting implies architect is the person who show the instruction of a painting, not a person who trace the shadow. And apart from the imagination, another thing you can extract from the sketches and drawing is the data. In architectural design, the way we solve the problem is by sketching. Most of the time you start with a white canvas and you jot down all the information, constraints, and dimensions. Then you draw a site to start to discover the form of architecture and the form of space. This is a drawing from Italian architect Carl Scarpa. You can see this drawing contains plenty of information across multiple scales and views. Some sketches are like doodle to quickly picture the image of a space. Some are drawn in precise dimension to lay out the instruction for the construction. So to a certain degree, the building is already started to build when the detailed instruction lines are placed on the paper. The value of this sketch, this drawing, is the capability of conveying information both practical and conceptually. And in Alberti's theory, the architect be becomes the person who defines the data and document the data. So the blueprint of the building can be deliverable. Ideas can be transmitted in a physical format. People who have knowledge of construction can build based on those predefined data. So how can we translate data from sketch to a buildable drawings? This is a, the way we used to record data is drafting. And now most popular software is in the market is Revit because of its robust function of data management. The communication between each individual is more direct and intuitive. It helps to reduce the potential problem in the future, but we all know it's a worse software to sketch an idea. And all other software has its own limitations. So now like uh, all the buildings becomes like phone follow the software. We can do we design a phone because of what we can do with the software or what we want to do with the software? For me, transferring the data from sketch to drawing is a different story from transferring the data from sketch to computer. There's a, always a gap between physical and digital. And some information were lost during the transferring process. So what if we can sketch directly in the digital space from the beginning? And this is a, a highly constrained uh, sketch from Greg Dean's animate form. By changing the parameter of a set of predefined rules to get a variation of the outputs, you can get consistent multiple results from the same rules. And an this is another project from Greg Dean. So he simulated a bouncing ball movement to find a form for architecture. 
is a concept that can that we can start it to sketch on computer to sketch in the 3D modern space. So, An architectural student now maybe is more skillful and comfortable to sketch in the digital space rather than the physical space. Some people might have never drawn on paper in their architectural education now. And why, uh, why do I talk about the uh, imagination sketches and drawing data? Because we are at the time of like uh, massive a lot massive information. And then we are finally reach, uh, reaching the time to have enough data to create something meaningful from AI. Uh, example, a famous example of using AI to create something human never thought of is a goal match in 2016, AlphaGo. In the move 37 by AlphaGo, AlphaGo made a, made a surprising move that every, every expert thought it was a mistake, but it turns out to be the winning uh, winning key point for the whole game. And it's a new new creativity way to play Go. And recently, two powerful platforms, uh, Dali E and Me Journey, just uh, released. This, these are many tools like that you can create super realistic images from test test prom. So I'm not sure if you have already seen this or not, but if you are on social media platform, you might have been overwhelmed by AI image lately. And so the, the way how it works is to take your text prompt and fit it into the AI translator to refresh your text to something the machine can read and based on the train model to generate a series of images. But let's uh, slow down to think about this. If your text will be first translated by AI, and then you don't really know what's happening behind it, is that still human imagination? And how much control do you have during the process? And these are some images from uh, uh, architect and professor Corey's Instagram. Is is a uh, test for the ye uh, yellow series, just make, making an architecture from the text prompt. And another one, urban agriculture series from Professor uh, Jose Sanchez. So I don't know what you all think about this, but for the people like me who even have no idea, no, like what kind of text should I type in? I found these tools really limited for me, just personally. I feel this is only for the uh, only works for the people who was already creativity. Maybe it's a creative writer or artist for those people who have already have their knowledge about the style, aesthetic, art, or architecture. And but don't get me wrong, I think this is a impressive and helpful to us to look for inspirations. And but let's go back to the first two slides. The concept of cloud tracing, some images can have completely different description. And I think that is uh, human imagination. Imagination is to combine something that exists to produce something that doesn't exist. So I would like to propose another, another idea of sketching in the digital space. If we use AI as an instructional guide to search similar images on data set, what can we create with these human AI cooperations? So now AI is, is, is the one to trace the cloud, to imagine the world. And then with all the accessible data, knowledge and data uh, on the internet, and the human will be the person to make a decision to sketch, to imagine what, what, what this object can be in a digital space. So there are uh, three phases. The first phase, the phase one is about making a messy model. And I want to use this phase to think about what's, how does a city influence architecture style? What is the role of architecture in the city? Should architecture be an object that blends into the context or an object that, is, that convey a statement about the designer, about the author? And so talking about city, our impression of the city is formed by 
every little element in the city. If you look at the city from the satellite, you can see color, texture, layout of the streets. And all of these play a critical role to differentiate one city from the other. Here you can see two AI generated images. The one from the left is resembled to Venice. And the one from the right is resembled to Barcelona because of the similarity of the texture, color, and pattern. <clears throat> and what if the building is made by this concept, sampling texture, color, pattern from the city and recombine to be a new entity? So if you look far away, you can see the whole, whole, whole building blend into the context to become a complete image of a city impression. But if you learn in a little bit to see closer, you can see this building is might be actually assembled by different components. Each component might have different meaning to represent some, to have another um, interpretation of its own. <clears throat> And so this tool is uh, developed, developed uh, on the Blender as a plugin. And there are two UI panels, one for displaying the real-time image classifier. This will show the, the, the precedent, the images uh, to the user. And another is for, and another three function is for analyzing this model and also do a style transfer to to transfer the, the, the precedent image to, the, to your, your current model. And then the last one is texture mapping. And this is the, the demo of showing how the, this software works. So as you start to model an object, the image classifier will, will analyze your current model and look through the data set to find the most similar images. And this is an output object from the model in platform. The hazard display shows how many operations were, were being used in the process and how long it takes to make this model. So, uh, and this is more like a sketch, sketch, uh, sketch tools for concept design. So this, the average time for modeling is around 25 minutes. And this is another one. And so, the how the function works the first is you start to do the image search and then based on the color shape and texture you look through the data set and next just draw a screen capture to analyze your model and to extract a feature from your model and then to match what is in the data set and bec because uh, the way machine uh, see the image is different from, from humans, so you might get unexpected uh, output from there. And next is style transfer. So you can transfer the image you find to the, to the model. And then you can project the texture on the model to become another, another guidance for, for your for you to uh, proceed in the modeling, modeling. And these are a few tests to uh, few tests done by, by some other students to see how different people use this platform. So and you Yeah, on the bottom right, you can see uh, the style transfer images on the model start to become a guide uh, for people to just like, as a, as a template to cut model or, or do some other operation based on the image texture. And the images on the, images on the left are the precedent that was sampled and the images on the right are the style transfer images during the process. And the last function is to deploy components. And then so this allows the user to select 
uh, vertices by different color, and then you can assign the prefix, a pre-designed pre component to the, to the place. So components will give the overall model another layer of depth to create a new building form in higher resolutions. And the second phase is to generate the interior space. So the model I'm using is the piece-to-piece -piece image trans translation model from TensorFlow. TensorFlow is an open source machine learning platform with piece-to-piece -piece model I'm able to train a particular building type by color coding of the program. So after training, you can fit the black silhouette images to the, to the machine, and then you will generate the best uh, program-to-program -program relationship plan to you. And So this is demo of the for the tool of the tool for form finding. And once you have the mesh model, you can st start to slice this mesh model and then fit the slice images to the piece to piece to run the uh, program ge generation. And based on these images, you can make a, a voxel value to see the uh, program relationship in the, in also in the section. So more three, three dimensionally to, to find the relationship between different program, like these images. And then this color program diagram can be can be a guide for you to deploy the component for for the interior space. And then so this, this will be what the, what the, uh, what have been generated for the interior space, the component for interiors. And then this will be the exterior shell messy model, which generated from the the, the face one. And this just the this this is a screenshot. So I just tried to show this. Uh, it's a like real time uh, sketch tools. You can quickly to find what is possible for 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 the interior or exterior. And this is another shot. So this experiment is for me to think about the style and conceptual design in architecture. Uh, this modern plugin is like a guidebook to display the Preston images to show what is good architectural design. And I start to have a question like, can people who have never learned architecture can also be able to design some object that match the standard of great architecture in, in this media context? Or can this tool bring more design ideas or does it limit our imagination? And can we use this platform to speed up the conceptual phase in architectural design? And thank you. Cool. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, I wonder if any of the um, people in the room has any questions. Feel free to raise your question. Uh, I do have, I do have uh, my, like, it is really over, 
well, overwhelming to see all of this, and it's really hard to understand for myself, to be honest. Um, but I wonder, uh, for example, the the second example you um, show, where you have an actual uh, city context, mm -hmm. uh, when you are trying to get the form of the building, the the first massing, yeah. when you are pushing and pulling. What was who's doing that? Is is it you uh, based on your preference, or is it based on any of the any of other uh, reasons? Uh, now it, I I'm the the one making the model, and then okay. it's not it's not controlled by by machine, but just mm -hmm. the. Basic idea is like when you design an object, you you maybe you analyze the condition on the site, and then you place the mesh based on the site site condition. So okay. in the beginning, I was thinking like, where's the entrance? Like uh, where should I put the the mesh in? And then the images on the left le uh, left bottom side start to show some some similar form. And then ah oh, okay, I see. I, so. Uh, this is like a live tool. So when you start, like it's like when you are pushing and pulling, it show it analyze the shape live. Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. But um, my second question is, um, where is the pool of the image? Like, is it you collecting a series of images? You have a collection of images of your own preference, or like how? open is this uh, pool of data this is a data set you can mm -hmm. uh, you can curate your own own, own data set by, by mm -hmm. each individual, individual person is there's no like limitation on this like so the data set doesn't need to be architecture it can be anything and then maybe you have your preference for 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 object or for a city you can have your own data set to, to do this Cool. Um. Uh, this is Spencer. I had a, a question on, I like the cross sections to kind of show the program uses and then you fed that back in to create that final form. Um, can you go back to the last image when you finally uh, generated it to, uh, yeah, like one of these. So I, say, I saw it with the, the shapes and the facades and things. Um, was there, after you got that input, um, did you ever try to go back to the original forms that you had that that are now further informed by by the voxels you created for the program spaces, just to see how that form then looked with a more refined design based off of that program? Okay. Yeah. Now, now these these program uh, tools generate generation just for looking for the interior space. So now it's like basically it's covered by this shell. Mm -hmm. So, but, but there's there's definitely the space for the interaction between two, like, like what happened if you have like your interior program is like bigger than your shell, maybe your shell will start to change based on that. But there's definitely room for, for like the dialogue between interior and exterior. But now it's just simply just making the interior components out of this uh, messy model. All right, cool. Anybody else in the room has any questions? Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I've got one. It's Jack Glassman. Um, amazing images. I was just trying to understand, if, forgive me if I've sort of missed it, but is part of this an involving at least what used to be called expert systems, where it's kind of like the software, you, you either enter and, and nudge it along with rules, with various rules to follow to, to generate those shapes, or the software generates its own set of rules and priorities and it can do this and move this way, but it can't move that way for each type of kind of a system shape. You're talking about a system shape? What, what, what was the question? About? Well, I guess the question is, uh, I know the term many years ago was used with expert systems where it would really, you, you would kind of, uh, 
Well, it was early sort of uh, AI, I guess, in that uh, the, uh, the you know, uh, software would be asking certain questions and weighing, you know, it would it would generate a solution. I don't know, maybe the way they play chess, or like computers play chess too. It's like it, at each move gets evaluated sort of numerically as to whether it's following those rules. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wondered how or to generate these different solutions, it's because there were different rules, even though you know there were graphics in this case. Mm -hmm. Sorry, if that's not a good question because I'm uh, just trying to understand it, but they are really amazing constructions. Hey, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, no, you can go ahead and answer. I was just gonna give my perspective on expert systems and maybe the evolution as I see it. Um, I think that, I guess that the difference between, it seems to me, from my understanding, what AI does in expert systems, expert systems is almost like a priori, right? Somebody has to like write down all the rules so that, and you can only play within the bounds of those rules. I think maybe what's a bit more interesting here is it's not about um, specifically or explicitly writing down rules is collecting a set of images and then saying, find out how this stuff fits together. So maybe that's maybe where we start living, that, um, departing from the idea of expert systems because here yeah, there, there is no expert writing down the rules. It is just saying, this looks like this other stuff. But maybe it is the same. And yeah, maybe that's one of the questions mm. we need to start asking. I yeah, I want in in my my project. Thanks. Okay, the first one is definitely try to break that kind of system thinking about like setting up rules and to generate something. But the phase two right now is still maybe is still in 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 the same system about how to deploy the component, how to generate the the, the small kind of facade patterns on 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 the model. But the 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 initial goal ideas I try to use machine as a assistant to to give you more inspiration to to find the 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 overall uh, overall geometry. So can I um can I say my my understanding is that for um right now at this stage uh, this tool is like you said, it's an assistant. It's assisting your design making and either that's aesthetically or um, if you have any other principles in mind. So it's really just a um, tool, a much faster and powerful tool to sort through um, any of the data set that you want it to sort through. So you are still um, the person who actually um, define the rules and also making the decisions? Yes. I mean, yes, like you can use this, this tool, but you completely ignore the images from, from, from the data set and then you just make your own design. It's just completely fine. Just there's no constraint on this, I think. For, for, mm -hmm. for the tool is not like forcing you to, to make some, some some procedural model based on the, the things I define. It's just a guidance to show you what can be, and then you can choose your own direction from there. Great, we have a question in the chat. T, do you wanna turn on your mic or should I just read it out? I guess I will read it out. So um, he's wondering uh, how are the boxes? Yeah, okay. Box cells uh, or small components place onto the massing. How does it place the different type colors of the smaller resolution onto the massing made? I guess it's, he's asking about the last part. So when you sort through all the images, um, yeah, how, how do you get the final result? Okay, so this for the uh, exterior, this is, uh... Same as this one. So once we uh, finish a process of form finding, and then you get an uh, object with a texture, 
and then based on texture, you can uh, this you can pick a pick a color from texture, decide like which component goes to which which uh, color, and then so this is also another another uh, possibility you can uh, differentiate decide from others just like by by how you design the component and how you deploy the component to the machine can create different kind of uh, output like. Uh, yeah, but the way to 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 assign the component to to the messy model is just like uh, matching the color with the the points, and then move the component to that points. Yeah, I found it a little bit difficult to see how the first image is relating to the second one. Like you have some orange dots, and then some are black. Which one? Can you can you pause on the pink image? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, this one. Yeah. So I I wonder, like, are they like? Do you start with the first one and then you implement it on the second one and then it generates a third one? What are the relationship? Because for example, for the second one, you only see the orange. Uh, for the first one, you only see the. Uh, orange dots right and then but on the second image you see orange dots and black dots and how does that translate into oh. each other yeah the first image is the texture texture for for the second images so just if you unfold the image package it will be like this and mm. these these two are basically the same one just unfold version but and mm -hmm. then so the the, the the planner one only show the vertices the the point I select. Mm -hmm. and the second one is the when you when you are model in the in the software you this is what why what, what you okay. see. Uh, and once you choose the the point, you can just like assign the components to that point. And so this final model is combined with three or four different kinds of components. Cool. Anybody else has any questions? I, I, I personally still have a lot of questions um, because I, I think everything's really, really amazing here. Um, and I know this is really um, innovative uh, methods to um, work in a 3D space to generate a form and texture. I wonder, are there any um, real life um, application or is there any like the beginning of any real life um, application? Yeah, uh, in the beginning, I was trying to do, wait a second. Something like this, and this mm -hmm. is from. I'm not sure the uh, how uh, feasible this can be. Like uh, initial idea was, I was thinking the experience for working in the office. Like each architecture office has their own style. Like mm -hmm. even if they, they refuse to say that, but they have their own style in, <laughs> in, in design. And then when when I first joined the office, I don't know their style. I just continue to work on what I. I, I know about architecture. So every proposal is, is hard to pass. It's always been rejected because the style doesn't fit the obvious need. But if you have image on the side, it maybe it's a plan or a rendering, but any kind of images, at least you can get something close to what the obvious need. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the competition design. And then, mm -hmm. so I, I think at least just, in the beginning, just the tools for myself to 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 quickly to get get the information from the office, and then I can mm -hmm. create something in their style. Just. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I just like recall like when when I started undergrad, we when we do any kind of project, we we we, we did a research, and then we find all the images and then plans. And we start to trace the plan, or we we just cut and paste to to create a new new like sketch model or or, or drawings from the question. 
So I think this is same kind of idea, but it's operating in the digital space. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, you started off the presentation talking about imagination, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think poetically. Um, in your study with the, oh, with the, that you've done with the tool, do you think um, this is helping imagination or do you think it's actually um, just getting people to copy what's on Instagram? Because that's always kind of like one of the questions. Is this like helping us generate new forms? Or are we just yeah. in what's already out there? Yeah, there's a really good chance people will just copy, but I believe if you use, if your data set, including like something from other other field, not not like let's say you design cup, you, you, you don't just put a cup, you put other kind of stuff inside. And those things might inspire you just unconsciously. And, but I, but, but because this kind of top, like topic about imagination and creative is too abstract to, to talk. You only can, can feel when, when, when you are really see something being achieved. But I don't know, I just open, I, I, I feel there's, there must be a bit benefit from, from these tools, but, but people still will probably just use to copy stuff. I don't know. I think that's a really, really interesting point because um, it's also a really, really good critic to what is happening. Um, I mean, there are different ways to look at this, right? Uh, first of all, um, there's nothing really new. Everything um, that you think it's new has been done by somebody else. Uh, if you yes. can browse through all the history, all the documents you can find, um, there's nothing really, really new. But um, on the other hand, I do think it's a really good criticism when you it's actually pretty ironic when you say that uh, when you work for an office and they have certain styles and you would want to um, match their style um, and that reminds me that um, people just like Pinterest Pinterest is a mm -hmm. public company now because so many so many people just need to use it to find inspirations and we find that in the professional world we kind of rely on um, image search uh, much more than um, before we had the technology and, and much more than what we do in the school. Well, I'm not sure but, um, mm -hmm. about that, but, uh, but at least from my own experience, um, you want to find a reference images. Um, maybe the client just need to know what you are talking about. They want to feel confident about um, mm -hmm. whatever you are proposing. But on the other hand, I feel like um, it takes um, that technology or the availability of more uh, um, image resources actually limit um, the chance for uh, the community to innovate in a way because people just really want to see I mean, that's a human nature and you always want to buy something, you know what it's going to do. Uh, you're spending so much money building a building. You want to feel uh, confident that it's not going to come out. You have to be very adventurous to be able to create something new, right? So I, I yeah, I think Adi, you wrote, uh, you raised a really, really interesting um, perspective. Yeah. It's a nice question. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned um, your, your interior space is um, work in progress right now. And um, I wonder what, what's your next step um, in your exploration? Because now the the way to generate program is all based on the uh, machine learning, the, mm -hmm. the image to images. Mm -hmm. And I want, I will, I want, I hope, hope like once you get this Russell model, uh, everything is fixed. I hope it can be more interactive. You can maybe you can change, change this uh, program, change the value. And then you can know like, uh, how many you can know the the uh, statistic like how how many percent of the program 
you have right now. And then, and then as you change the medicine, you know how much you can change. Like in a more, maybe a more practical way to think about how you arrange the program in, in, in the space. Does it make sense? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say I 100% follow all the process, but because it's a lot of information, but it's really eye-opening for, for myself. I hope it's the same for all the audience. Um, just wonder anybody else has any thoughts, um, any question, criticism, and... I, I may have one, one additional mm -hmm. question is... Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you've presented a project that's obviously given us a possibility of the future. And you can hear it's like, we're in this weird place where we're both like worried, like, well, this is scary. At the same time, like it's hopeful. Um, as you know, as the author of this tool and thinking of the future, what would be your dream of the impact if you like to think of the outcomes this could create within the space of architecture? What is like your dream and hopes for it? It's a really big question. Uh, for me, I think I, I hope this can be an alternative to alternative tools to 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 organize the data between different platform. Like the model make from this platform can can have the data about how your your program and then this can be maybe transferred to, to Revit or other software. But this is kind of like uh, your sketchpad before you 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 input to, to before you turn into the construction construction drawing. And then because like your uh, if you translate the information from software to software is you can keep more information than translate from your hand drawing to to, to another software. I feel there's always something lost during the process. But if, if you sketch from the beginning, maybe the, the sketch and the final output will be more closer. I don't know. Yeah, but I just hope this can be an alternate, alternative way to to do the conceptual design for architecture from finding. All right, thank you. Thank you. Great, I think that's a really, really good question. And um, again, in the description of this um, event, you, you said you're obsessed with drawings. I, I think I can totally see why um, like you made every decision with, within this whole process. Um, and I'm glad that uh, you answered that um, the last question. It's really um, again going back to the to the beginning. Um, it's really ways of uh, sketching out ideas. And uh, I feel like when I, I I I'm always very interested in um, like how how to how do you get ideas and how do you generate ideas and I think you really gave us a really good inspiration of um, a reflection of how that process was happening and could um, a different way of that process could happen in the future does that make sense yeah mm -hmm. great great thank you so much yeah thank you so thank much you. for having me Thank you for all the audience. So if you guys want to follow Jimmy, follow his Instagram. He has really, really cool images up there. Do you want to tell, tell everybody your account and how we can follow up with more questions? <laughs> well, leave I'm a, I'm a account in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Um, final notes, um, BSA Global Practice Network. Uh, we we are a knowledge community so we organize all kinds of events 
and there's not really a fixed rule of uh, what we do and what we not do. We just um, very spontaneously when when somebody reach out or when we have an idea, um, we just ask invite people to uh, give a talk or uh, we also organize some walking tours around um, Boston City. Um, so yeah, if you find uh, our events interesting, please follow BSA's website for more future events. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank Bye you. everybody. Thank you. Bye. Okay, all done. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Very interesting. I, I, I still expect you to <laughs> share something about like the 3D print. They, um, they take photos of the building's facade oh. and then they translate that to a 3D model and then they can 3D print it. Oh, okay. Sorry. You, you mentioned that to me. Huh? Uh huh. I mean, I thought you're gonna also touch on that that topic. Oh. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Chat. Chat later. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.